Okay, so I just spent uh, the day yesterday in Tunxi, which is a small district, well, not small, but a district inside Huangshan. If I want to visit Huangshan Mountain, uh, then I need to go north about 30 miles. I was going to do it from this hotel, but I decided that instead I'll load the trike up and I will ride to the mountains, find a hotel there, and then explore, uh, explore Huangshan Mountain uh, a little bit more casually. So I will see you, load up my trike, and see you on the road, and then uh, we'll go together to Huangshan Mountain, Yellow Mountain. Things are definitely falling into a routine. And with every day, things get a little easier, a little bit more quick. I'm learning what to put where, and what gear I need quick access to, and other things that might be able to be stored deeper. It's a balancing act, really, between weight, need, frequency of use, and overall importance. But it's still quite a messy affair, sort of like cleaning up after a hurricane before every ride. Okay, so uh, I did something that I haven't quite done yet, is weigh my bags. On the left pannier, which is where the trailer connects, it's 10 kilos. On the right, it's 12. And I did that because the weight of the trailer distributed some tongue weight there. And I'm gonna weigh the trailer next. So I got 11, uh, 12 on the right, 10 on the left, and then my uh, behind trailer is, is five. The trike uh, estimated weight is 35 kilos. I'm now 92. Okay, so I just weighed the trailer and it is 36.3 kilos. Uh, obviously, I don't have my camera, which I'm holding in my hand, and uh, the tripod, which is super light anyways. Maybe one of the most picturesque rides I've had so far. The ride to Huangshan Mountain took me through some beautiful hilly countryside, 66 kilometers up and down, while meandering along a river flowing the opposite direction from the mountains I was headed towards. Until now, I've been getting looks from people, pretty consistent smiles and curiosity. Uh, but they've changed as I head up, up to Huangshan. They look at me with similar curiosity, like, wow, this is an interesting thing, I've never seen this before. 
for. But it's mixed with like an apprehension. Like, this guy has no idea what he's in for on this strange contraption he is riding. You know? What's life but a little risk, right? We don't do things, uh, what was that saying? Something about people doing amazing things because they're hard, not because they are easy. So, I don't think this is going to be in the easy category today. What's life about a few tests, right? Jayo, beautiful here. At least it'll be a beautiful ride. Pain and beauty mixed together. Wish me luck. Hello. I'm about to head up the mountain road that goes to the uh, the next stop, the next destination. And uh, hey, I'll let you be the judge. That is Huangshan's famous Yellow Mountain. Um, I'm on the road uh, headed up to where I'm going to stop, which is another resort. I'm sorry guys, but you know, if I can stay in a little bit of luxury, I will. It just seems like three kilometers to the place, but the road is extremely windy. And there are some police up there that might actually turn me away, in which case I'll have to call the hotel and have them send me a car. But, uh, I'm 67 kilometers into my ride already, so even if I have to quit, it'll be a pretty good day. I'm going to uh, head off and take my chances up there and see what they say. It'd be nice to take the road up to Yellow Mountain. Okay, like I sus suspected, they're not going to let me go. So. Hello. <laughs> so uh, I have to call the hotel and have him come down. <laughs> At least they're nice about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> this is the uh, this is actually the first big rain that my bike has been in. I'm waiting for the car to come down from the hot springs to pick me up. Poor guy sitting out there all alone. Okay, this is the road I could not ride up, and the trike is <laughs> loaded up as good as possible. Uh, and we'll be at the resort in about three kilometers. I wish I could have rode this road. Actually, it seems very feasible, but I know that what they're saying there's there's a lot of buses going up and down and. It's pretty dangerous if, if I was just riding here. That Louis, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, it's pouring rain. But that's actually kind of nice. Okay, I am in, uh, in Yellow Mountain in a resort where uh, I disassembled all my stuff and I found that uh, um, everything got pretty wet. I was hoping that my trailer would provide a little bit more water security, but uh, to no avail. Although it was pouring, it's not like I'm not going to be in other pouring situations. So I've got to rectify this. Tomorrow I'll maybe wake up early and see the sunrise. I hear it's really nice over Huangshan, uh, Yellow Mountain. So see you tomorrow. Or see me at dinner. I don't know. I'll take the camera with me. I'm in a Chinese restaurant and there's something interesting in the Chinese restaurant. Ni hao. 
，他会跑的，你能不不要过去。It's interesting to be in a Chinese restaurant and see a rabbit, and you can't eat it. She's too cute to eat anyway. Now you can't see it, but this is Wangshan, Yellow Mountain. Around me, I'm in a valley, so the to the left and the right, the, uh, the mountains are just rising up and it's really picturesque. There's a cloud that is rolling over the highway right now. Not really a highway, just an just a, a access road to the mountain. I'm gonna hike up to the top and uh, go to a scenic spot, and take some pictures, do a little video. It's 5.40, so I missed the, uh, the sunrise by just a few minutes, but I don't think I would have seen much anyway with the, uh, with the fog. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a ghost town. The only people I see walking around are workers. Um, hotel staff and uh, cleaning personnel and People carrying brooms and you know, just just the people that keep uh, Hongshan running. I'm basically two or three days late for the end of travel season, so everybody is back to work. Personally, I kind of like the hustle bustle of a of a moving city. You know, it's uh, it's a little bit a little bummer. and roots. I couldn't think of a better place to practice. <laughs> Holy shit. There was a bee in my pants. On my junk. There was a bee on my junk. Woo. <laughs> it's hard to get focused after that happens. That he was crawling on my nutsack. Dance. Whatever. One of the things I'm always so fascinated about when I come to these old places is the amount of steps that they have. And not that the steps are tiring, which they are sometimes, but the stones are so big. I mean, even on the Great Wall of China, which goes into the mountains, you have these massive stones. They go for miles and miles. The Great Wall of China is like 6,000 miles long. This, this series of steps I'm going up is climbing a, a mountain face. And I'm sure it's gonna get more interesting as we go along, but this whole thing is set in with, with these stones. And each one of these long stones linked together and had to have been brought here, most likely on the back of some some villager or you know worker. I uh, I'm always impressed by stuff like that. I can only guesstimate that they're basically calling me a monkey. Attention to the monkeys. No feeding or teasing. <laughs>
I don't think there are many monkeys here that read English or Chinese, but I do. So what does that mean? Now I just bought my ticket uh, for the cable car. Uh, Huangshan is linked together peak by peak by a grid and a series of cable cars. This ticket was 230 kwai. That's about 37 American. That's a little steep. But I guess, you know, if you want to keep this place beautiful, you got to pay the price, right? So I'm going to go on up and uh, you're going to follow me. ticket I just bought at the ticketing gate just simply let me into the park. That was $37. When I got up to the first cable car, they said, where's your cable car ticket? And uh, it's then I realized that this trip is going to open up a little bit more and more every time. So those are the cable cars behind me. And this is my cable car ticket. Okay, I'm at the uh, the top of the first peak. This is the upper uh, peak at the top of the first cable car, and it is gorgeous. The clouds are slowly parting, and you're getting a view of the mountain. As you came up, it was simply clouds. You couldn't see anything except the wire uh, basically rising into the clouds, uh, kind of like you're in heaven. And people are scaling the, the peak above and I'm gonna go take a, uh, a long walk. Now, if you think you have a rough life and you think you have a tough job, look at these guys. The steps here are almost vertical and these guys will carry you in a chair, sort of like uh, Caesar's age, but they'll take you up and down the stairs. It's pretty incredible. I don't want that job. You can't feel it, but my heart is racing right now. There's a, a series of steps that are right behind me that are so precarious. They hang off these rocks and uh, I, I know that there's no way that I could fall. But uh, just that, uh, that inner feeling, that worry, my legs became like rubber bands. Super weird, super weird feeling. Now, I have a health 
healthy fear of heights. And part of this trip is actually trying to combat those fears. <laughs> so I've uh, arrived at the top of what I'm told is the tallest peak. This is the tallest, right? So, cool. This is what I was looking at from the bottom and that's, that's what I'm talking about, about uh, what travel gives you and what challenging yourself. It changes your perspective. You know, when I'm riding that trike and I see a hill, it feels like it's insurmountable. But if you take it and you do it, you make it to the top. Just like this mountain, you look from the bottom to where I am right now. It's craziness. It's amazing. But you accomplish it and you're a better person for it. Now I know you can't see it, but I am at the top of the highest peak in the Huangshan mountain chain. And although I can't see over the edge, if you could, you'd be fascinated because it is beautiful. I feel like there's some weather moving in, so I don't think that I'll get the joy of seeing the clarity from the top. But that's kind of the speciality of the Yellow Mountains, and it's one of the reasons why I think this might actually be one of the most amazing places I've been, in the top 10 maybe. Because it's like mysterious. You don't know what the next step's gonna take you. I could, I could walk this mountain chain uh, the same route three or four different times and get a different experience every time because the clouds reveal and then they cover and then they reveal and then they cover every time, revealing something new and covering something new. Hey, there we go. Well, it looks like somebody likes me. Just for a moment, the Yellow Mountains decided to reveal themselves to me. It's beautiful. Then you begin the path down. For me, going down seems a little bit more harrowing than going up. Here's no problem, but when you're on a cliff and you have to look out while you're going down, <laughs> it's, not as, uh, it's not as comfortable as looking at the cliff face as you're going towards it, you know, climbing up. <laughs> Do you see what I'm talking about? Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Jaiyo! 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 I'm Michi from and, Austria. And I'm Matthias from Austria as well. And we've been traveling China for roughly a month now. Chinese mountaineering is completely different from what it is in Austria. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I mean, we came with our, I mean, it's our second mountain. We've already been to uh, Emai Shan, to Mount Emai. 
And what we learned there is that shoes, clothes don't really matter. There's stairs everywhere and you can get up everywhere you want. There's cable cars, there's cars, there's even people carrying you up. So it's really beautiful here. We really enjoy it and it's also totally different <laughs> from what you're used to. So uh, what was your pinnacle of your trip so far? Pinnacle of our trip? Mm, the best thing of our trip. Um. Yes, the eating, the food. <laughs> um, yeah. The weird things you can yeah. eat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the weird yeah. thing you've eaten? We had frog. Okay. Yeah. We had scorpion. And I don't know what we had, but <laughs> they've had a whole know. number of things. <laughs> yes. The um, instant soup, instant like noodles, instant everything. Austria. It was also cool. We, we visited uh, friends in Shanghai and they only bike there. So we cycled through Shanghai mm -hmm. and spent the weekend mm -hmm. with them. That was also really cool, like cycling through such a big city and, and going places. Yeah. Do you find this place, uh, China, cycle friendly mm -hmm. or cycle worrisome? I mean, it depends on, basically it's cycle friendly, but uh, in terms of safety, I'm well, not Well, it's so not sure. safe on the road yeah, at all. It's not at all, <laughs> but it okay. is, it is, I mean, a lot of people do bike and, and they've got quite a bike culture, but I'm used to European cities, yeah. which are a lot more bike friendly. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, my uh, brand is Jayo. Can I have you guys do a Jayo? Okay. One, okay. two. Jayo. <laughs> cool, cool, Cheers. cool. Yeah, I was uh, I was walking around Huangshan for I don't know since this morning, and I haven't seen but a couple of foreigners. So I had to stop them and ask them what they were up to. They're out there seeing the world. So can you? So the clearest view of the mountains come after you go through a, a massive downpour. And I'm waiting here for the, uh, for the cable car to start working. I've been here for about, I don't know, about 45 minutes. And uh, we're all stuck here together. Hello. 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 And uh, now that the rain has passed, it kind of pulled the clouds down with it. So you can see a, a really beautiful view of the mountains. Hmm? Yeah. 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 Yeah.